Hi everyone, this is Alvia. We're going to be doing some mono printing techniques today for at home practice. Um, hopefully, layering some colors. Um, I'm going to be using Plexi today, but you are also welcome to use uh, Mylar. Uh, I just would suggest um, maybe adhering it to some mat boards so that you have some strength to move around and draw. Um, you can work on Asian paper, do some painterly approaches, and then as a final kind of finishing of the print, um, once it's done layering, uh, adhere it to paper in a faux shingle way. I'm using, I use spray adhesive for these. Uh, so um, you can do sort of a painterly approach. Um, we're gonna be rolling out some ink today. I'm using Caligo inks. I'm using Plexi that's pretty thick that I got at Home Depot. So I beveled the edges at 45. I'm using this tape as a stencil, and then I'm rolling out with just some little brayers from Speedball. Um, I think our biggest obstacle at home is supplies, figuring out, you know, I need like 20 brayers. And so you might peruse Home Depot and find some kind of spongy things to, to roll on ink. Uh, there's a lot of creative things. I also use cards. You can use daubers, um, any sort of way to get ink um, on Plexi and just painting it with a paintbrush. So be creative. It's an opportunity to sort of think differently outside the shop. Um, so I've got my yellow layer. I did a thin layer and you can kind of see because of the transparency of the Plexi um, just how thick or thin it is. I'm going to be doing a second layer so I'm sort of inking all my plates at once and then we'll print. Uh, so my second layer will be blue and then I've got these little scrap pieces of Plexi just because um, it does get overwhelming with if you're doing a lot of layers of ink to kind of keep things separate, think, kind of keep things clean. Uh, so these are kind of nice uh, scraps that I've sort of kept. So I'm going to be inking a solid layer of blue. If you don't have traditional inking knives like at school you can use a paint knife just kind of do it on its side pull it out roll out the ink thin you go in layers so that you any sort of overlapping of the roller kind of gets smoothed out and so any sort of roller marks get feathered out if you go in a different direction. And I just cleaned this plate so there's a little bit of resist from that last product I used. Um, but it'll be okay for what we're doing. Um, so blue rolled up. I'm going to be using a fabric for my stencil uh, to stencil out a pattern. But you can use paper, you can use... Uh, contact paper and uh, you can do this during the printing process but I kind of like to do it before so I kind of know what it looks like so if I hate it it can be erased putting a piece of copy paper or newsprint on top wax paper works fine and I'm applying a little bit of pressure with this Baron what I'm trying to do is to imprint that pattern of textile it can be leaves, it can be whatever you want it to be um, into that plexi so that when I print it, it'll have that pattern on there. You can get some pretty complex imagery uh, by using this process. I like it because if I hate it, then it's just wiped off. You can kind of see that really nice pattern on there. Okay, so we'll keep that aside. We can also incorporate lino cut and you can also do painterly approaches. Um, so if I'm in the studio, I would be, you know, diluting my ink with and making it sort of watery uh, with turpentine. Here at home, I want to be safe. So I'm using cooking oil and you can just sort of brush. You can use um, litho crayons or oil pastels. Um, it tends to have you need the paper a little bit dampened uh, to release for the litho crayons. So you can be a little bit painterly a la James. 
nose. A little bit abstraction. And then we'll print all this to kind of see how this all kind of combines, all these different approaches. Uh, so let's clean our space. And I'm just using simple green and paper towel. I've got my template here and my paper semi-dampened. Um, things I find that are difficult is to keep the registration perfect um, because of the dampened paper. So I do tape it down. So I've got my little registration underneath the plexi here just for cleaning purposes. Sometimes the blue tape isn't enough. So you can experiment with what kind of paper, what, what kind of tape works for you. I tend to print uh, light to dark. But you can do whatever you want. And then when I am rubbing from the back, I do like to have a piece of paper, preferably wax paper. This is just contact paper. So that I'm not uh, creating a lot of tension on that wet paper. The BFK does create, you know, it doesn't transfer perfectly because we're not doing a lot of pressure. Uh, so it can be a little bit salty, but let's kind of take that as a part of the process. You can peek at it to see if it's something that's a little bit salty, so I'll put a little bit of pressure. You can go back with your spoon. In the studio, you can use etching inks for this. Um, pretty much anything works. And here at the home studio, I tend to use Akua or this Caligo inks, which are kind of nice because everything is safe. Okay, so we'll take out our yellow plate. You could re-ink that again, or you could print the ghost of it, which is just the remnants of that ink, so that you could have like a little light yellow. Here's my textile plate. I'm going to be using just a couple of circle paper cutouts, just so you can see that you can stop out the ink from printing on the paper. And just go around the plate, making sure that you get as much as the information from that plate as you like. This gives you an opportunity to layer color and kind of see how things mix, especially with transparent blue, uh, colors like this one that it was almost 75% transparent base. Okay, so pretty good. Leaving that paper still down, we can kind of see that yellow coming through since the blue was stopped out. I'm gonna be adding this sort of painterly approach. Focusing on that image, I kind of know where it's at. This is con concentrated in the center, and then we'll add that final lino cut. Kind of an on the spot kind of image, but just to show, you know, what the possibilities of mono printing at home are. You can get some pretty good results. Um, you just have to be, you know, careful about the cleanliness of your space. So there's our abstracted. Uh, painting brushes, uh, painting approach, which gave a nice transfer. And then we'll let's add this last sort of circle lino cut, which was pre-inked using this paper again. I went directly last time just because I wanted that full impression of the ink. Um, 
this lino cup may be a little bit bigger than my image area, but just for experimentation and kind of seeing how things layer. Okay, y'all, so let's see. So color mono printing at home, layering with uh, colors and seeing just the possibilities of um, layering a variety of colors. So I hope that you experiment with um, either using Plexi or acetate and then incorporating a, a lot of sort of drawing or uh, lino cut or other material so you can create something very spontaneous and um, exciting. Hope you try it, mono printing at home.